My name is Junior T. My mother calls me Jonathan Linda. Some people think that, that I'm a big time producer. <laughs> Alright, why, why, why would people think that you're a big time producer? Well, because I spend all of my time in the studio <laughs> and I'm rarely in Toronto. I'm constantly on the go. But I think that's pretty much it. Um, I produce a variety of music. I produce band music, I produce music for vocalists, I produce music for film. Anywhere that needs music, I can make it. How long have you been involved in, in the music business? I've been in the business of making music for, I'd say, 15 years. I've been making music since I was seven. It started off really humble in the beginning. We, you know, you always start off with whatever setup you could afford in your house. Um, I had a studio in my basement for the longest time, and then eventually I made enough money to rent a space to house my studio, and that was like a nice evolution. And then um, I, my first opportunity to work in a studio space came when I was 20, and I was working for something called um, Inner City Visions, which was a community center studio. And it was, a small, it was a big room, but small space for the equipment. <laughs> and um, it's interesting, because you learn something in every room you work in, you know? After Inner City Visions, Inner City Visions grew to become something now known as the Remix Project, which is like an artistic incubator for at-risk youth. So they have like music studios, photography studios, a bunch of stuff like that. That room was pretty cool. That was the first time I had access to a, a real strong computer, let's say, because this is when Pro Tools is starting to become the industry standard. That was cool to have a space where I could actually use the tool as often as I wanted to. And then I guess it all kind of changed when my friend Major brought me to Jamaica. Still wait? Yeah, we're still waiting. We're going to get Stranger coming out so we can edit that out to make, you know, the documentary thing. We don't know. Blah, blah. We can put an edit point right here. And I got to work out of Tough Gong Studios for four days in the A room. Like man, like me, I used to play that thing, but you don't know. Still from Africa. I'm here to rap y'all at J.A. You see it. Red light. Intro. Working in a big studio like that, that's got so much history and legacy. It's it's humbling. It can be scary at times because you want to make something great in a room that's produced great music, but um, what I've learned from working in all these spaces is that they're all the same. The only thing that changes are the people in it. At Top God Studios, guys. Take this in. Major gratitude. Blessing. Thank you, sister. Yo, you brought yourself here. Nice to meet you. Eloquence. Unity. Mm -hmm. So you be soon. Ten, fifteen. Mm -hmm. Ten, fifteen. <laughs> Look at how you mic these drums, man. Take this in. This, miking drums is a science, see? So I'll mind them the one I put like a drum booth. Look how they put it on the studio floor, man. Hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, they started. Yo, started at like 8.30. One of them a big thing. But yo, the work doesn't stop. Uh, this is storage shit. All right, Junior. Yeah, yeah. Last day. Yeah, man. Fireman coming to pick you up in a um, few minutes. Could hear him. Mm -hmm. How was your trip? The trip was 
divine, y'all. <laughs> crazy. Learned a lot, felt a lot, and created a lot, which is like amazing, y'all. <laughs> see what I mean? You say your, your trip is divine at divine destiny. You see it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right. Yeah, man. So, once you reach back home, what do you think you're going to do musically? Wow. Music wise. How has what you learned here influence what you're going to do musically? Well, I'm just going to do whatever the fuck I want with the music. You can blank up and swear. Because, like, over here, it's all about vibes. People don't make music thinking about what the world is after. They yeah. just do what their heart's after. And to me, that was, like, so reassuring, especially being in a country that's governed by media and shit, you know what I mean? People are always told what's good or people prefer to be a, a follower instead of a leader, but coming here made me more firm in the belief of being a leader first, so. Word up. You know what I mean? Um, I could say it started out with a troop of rappers because I started out rapping, so I was kind of like the, the torch bearer for the squad. Very courageous, not afraid to take risks to see it grow. Um, so in the beginning, there was a lot of rappers. I was just making beats, let's say, in the beginning. I wasn't quite a producer yet. Me becoming a producer happened well after that. I prefer to be the person in control of releasing it. Yeah. But if somebody likes the beat so much, they just do a dub and drop it. That's cool. Live music? Yeah. It's the only way I know to be me, to be honest. Like, my dad's a drummer. And I was lucky to have a dad that was involved in the best way he could be. And the only way he felt he could be involved in my life was that like, he had me involved in his life. He brought me everywhere, you know what I mean? I went to like mad rehearsals and like whatever shows he could sneak me into. And like, growing up, that's all that really mattered to me as far as expression. You know what I mean? Play a little bit of keys here, rap to myself here. That's just what I connected with. Nothing else really mattered, you know what I mean? Had I had found some kind of academic pursuit, I know at the end I'd like to do it, but it just wasn't exciting enough. Music continuously gave me challenges in pursuit of the goal, you know? It keeps me fresh every day, so that's what I'm doing. We're in the studio right now. It looks like we're just lamping out, but this is just recharging the spirit. Conversation is what it is when we create music. It's just conversation, but in different tones, sonically, emotions, chords, you know? And I'm just blessed to like connect with more people and music's community really. Because when you have a band, it takes more than one to make that whole ensemble of sound. So it's like the foundation of community, which is what I stand for. It's kind of ironic, but yeah man. Music's what I breathe, what I live, it's what we all do actually. I mean your heart beats don't it? I'd say the difference between a producer or what a real producer is, is very different than a beat maker. A beat maker does exactly that, just makes the beat. The producer is a part of every step of cr completing and creating a song. They will help create the energy in the space that will facilitate creativity. They'll be able to make the artist feel comfortable they also know how to capture lightning in a bottle. They know how not to miss the moment. They also know how to make the moment. They are also the best alchemists, producers. Producers know how to take different energies and have them all find common ground so they can be creative together. And that's what I've learned over the last four years as a real producer is that it's not about what I do in the room. It's how much room I make for the people in the room to be themselves. Huh? Okay, you are the foundation. <laughs> You're beautiful, thank you. Um, yeah, we're going to go to another joint. You can come in here just to feel it out. I'm not a trained musician. I am a self-taught musician, like many of my peers. I can understand theory. I can communicate theory with musicians. Do I sight read off paper? No, I don't do that. And do many of the players I work with do that? No. I like to work with people that can emote freely without thinking about it. One, two, three, four. It's gonna be quick. Yeah. Yeah. Play it back again, one more time, please. Two, three, four. Yeah. 
Dr. Major taught me one valuable lesson. Whenever you film a video, always cover the logo. Always cover the logo. Unless you're sending me quad, I'm gonna cover the logo. After that, I got to work out of Marshall Montano's private studio in his house for two months. And that was where I started to make sense of my producer's nature, which was making room for people. Because that was the first time in a long time that I got to like command a space. It was mine for two months. And I got to facilitate the energy in the space. So having an opportunity to work at Marshall's place really sent me on my way. Don't throw fists, got a problem with the squad, then you can hold this. Six criminals don't beef with the shooters. Catch me with your jeans and the coolers. The coolers. It sounds like you're playing the role of producer engineer at the same time. <laughs> yes, I am. I am. <laughs> um, I also can engineer out of necessity. I learned how to record things properly, and it's a part of my fascination with sound as well. So, um, great engineers also know how to capture lightning in a bottle, but I feel like the best producers do both. So I've spent time learning how to record more than just vocals well. I know how to record instruments very well and record them in any environment. I think that's what makes a great producer engineer, is that um, you don't always need a pristine studio. Some of our favorite songs were recorded with less mics than there were instruments, you know? And it's all about capturing the feel, so I just want to make sure I could always capture the feel. Great music leaves room for fun mistakes, because great music happens when you're having fun. And I think when you take the fun out, you know, it's too regimented. It may not hit the same. I feel like some of my favorite music I've ever listened to, like, you know, Tom Brown's Funking for Jamaica. Yeah, that's a wicked track, that. <clears throat> that song is a jam. You know, they're literally jamming. They pretty much came up with one groove and gave like everybody a chance to play on the groove. You know what I mean? Just one hook. Even um, Roy Ayers, Everybody Loves the Sunshine. That's just a groove. And then everybody gets the chance to solo on it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, those guys didn't write those solos. They probably played the song five times and they picked the best take. And I'm guessing they probably picked the first take. <laughs> you know what I mean? Probably picked the first take, I'm You know, but that's usually what it is. So I feel like that's the most important part. After I signed my first deal, it came with like a really high-end studio because that was what I required. And um, I finally had a space I could invite anybody to. So once I had that freedom, I started to siphon in a variety of artists that I didn't dream of working with before, like jazz singers, soul singers, country singers, whatever. As long as you loved music, I made time for you. So um, yeah, I definitely met all walks of life. And it's cool when those people bring their closest people with them too. So I'm meeting varieties of different energies, but um, yeah, it's good people. <laughs> It's formerly known as the Hive, it's currently known as Sole Sound. Um, the room I was working out of is one of the oldest rooms, the OG room as they call it. Uh, it belongs to a musician who plays guitar, so my room has eight guitars in it, five keyboards on the wall. Um, drums. I needed a room that had a lot of instruments so if my musician homies came they didn't have to like travel with a lot they could just bring themselves. Um,
three phones on me. Three phones on me. How could I be so lonely? I fucked up. I put myself in position to do it. I had a plan, so I thought the position is stupid. Now all I say is thank you. All I ever say is thank you. What I do, what I'm known for is that um, I make the first hour and a half to two hours have nothing to do with music. This is my personal process, so I like to spend that first hour and a half just grounding, you know, whatever it is that makes people comfortable. So whether it's like alcohol, weed, good food, fruits, what, whatever it is, and we just spend that time talking about life, how time has been spent, what we're going through, and it's always fun to see what common ground people share, because you never know. And then once that energy is established and everybody is enjoying each other, then I slowly make my way to my workstation and I'll start noodling or playing. And I always have a couple musicians with me to make the creative experience easier. So I'll have like my friend Mark James who plays keys there, or my friend TJ who plays guitar. And it'll just be a jam. I'll just put on some drums or I'll play the drums myself. And the energy in the room always plays the melody. We never have to think, we never have to go too far, we just like jam. And then once the vocalists in the room start mumbling, I know that that's the, that's the tone. And then I'll start to take that moment and build on it. And then once the vocalist is at the point where they want to put some words down, depending on who they are, I may just put them in the booth right away, let them just like express. Because a lot of the realest stuff comes on the first take and if you miss it, you know, then you're gonna be spending hours trying to find that feeling again. And I just, it's not a part of what I like to do. I like to just catch it in the moment. So it always starts with chilling and then just like make the art a part of us spending time. And then it comes together. But I feel the best way the conversations are documented were in the songs. Because instead of having to hear the back and forth, you get to hear the conclusions or like the main points, overarching things we're talking about in a really digestible way. What you saying? Take your time. We could kick it. I'm off at five. Just saying. Take your time. We could kick it. It's been a while. Say what? That right. Could kick it. That right. It's been a while. All right. Well, one of my person I'm currently working with is my my little sister Jesse Reyes. She's amazing. Bam bam. I've worked with um, many people, uh, Little Sims. I've worked with YG Tut from Chattanooga, Tennessee. If I can't make it right, I might die inside. Not exactly love, probably bought a lot. Somewhere between lust and I will make it mine. Um, I've worked with Milo Smith, who's like a legend from Atlanta. I've worked with Benjamin A.D. from London, England. Um, I've had sessions with a variety of people from around the world. But um, I think the biggest stars that I've ever worked with are my closest friends. <laughs> Yes. Um, when I was working on some music in Chattanooga, Tennessee, I went to this place called Flock House. Yeah, 
And I feel that Flock House is our generation's Motown. It houses some of the greatest musicians I've ever seen play and some great singers and writers. And they all live in this house in a really communal way. Um, it's a real family. It, ha it sits on like an acre of land, completely blanketed by trees. It feels like you're at a musical retreat. It's a treat, it's truly a blessing to work out of that space. And I was there for a week the first time, and I made 14 records, no, five days, I made 14 records. And out of those, I took one for my album, and then we went back to shoot the video for that song, and I made another 14 songs. <laughs> going to be released, yes. Um, Studio Monk is the name of the project and um, it's a testament to my journey of finding myself. I spent the last four or five years making sense of my decision to do music full-time and um, most of the time I'd spent being the performing artist because I felt like if I wanted to drive this machine I had to like get it done myself but um, as time passed I realized that producing the soundscape and getting people to be in a comfort zone was my magic I didn't know it was there so I um, you know like many people that are creative they go through ups and downs and um, what kept me sane through it all was being in the studio so this album is pretty much moments that kept recentering me over like, the last two and a half years <laughs> and uh, it's how I discovered my workflow as well. The whole chilling before and then creating. Once I signed the deal, I made sure that like, a studio came with it free of charge to me. So kudos to Pirates Blend for believing in me and taking that on. <clears throat> and it gave me a space where I could do that. So um, this album is like a scrapbook of all these great conversations I had in that space and time shared with people in music form entire energy that he embodies that when he's around that's what he gives and when he curates his and anytime he's curating a party or a studio vibe it's like jeans the other day we had a show and his songs came on and like the entire energy changed this is studio monk studio monk what you know about a motherfucking mc Slash producer slash ill motherfucker like a monk. Huh. We about to bring out a bad man. 
and a bad band. We live in the time of convenience and novelties and everyone's releasing sound packs and all these brand new synthesizers you can download and they're all great tools but I feel like in that change people forgot the magic in recording your own sounds. You know? And the magic of like the characteristics of a space. There are some albums where people, you know, have been freaking out about how reverbs were done and it, sometimes it was them using the stairwell in the building they lived in and putting the microphone at the top of the stairs. Like, if you don't have a 14-story stairwell, like, you can't recreate that, you know? If your room is a certain dimension and you record in the middle of that room, that's your sound, you know? I could download a bunch of guitar patches all day, but nothing beats me just plugging in my friend's guitar and just running it through a bunch of things and making a unique tone that belongs to that moment. You know? I'm cranking this up too. Go ahead. Oh, so that's the cable. Uh, give me some. Say what? All right, yeah. I know you're feeling it, y'all. Fat shouts to Chino on the drums. Damn. We got Tommy on the keys. Charles Leon started it off. Man, everybody get live with it. Let's go. Nice. I think that was easy. Say what? Feel good now. Ooh, we got that. We got that studio mount thing going. We got Master that. the tool first. <clears throat> you know? You could buy a great guitar that's worth $20,000, but if you can only play one string, you're still playing one string, you know? So, if you're buying tools for a studio, get the basics and spend all the time you can learning how that microphone works, learning how that interface works, and how your computer works and the tools you're using. Because <clears throat> my previous album, ICU, I recorded it in my garage, and nobody was the wiser. This latest album, I recorded it in five places across the world, and you think it's all one space. And I recorded it personally myself. Do you dream of places where your name is? Wanna trade places with the faceless? No, I don't accept your invitations. of being a producer at, at your stage of, of your career? Um. The upside is um, I own my time. I'm my own boss. I've been self-employed completely since, well, when my daughter was born. She's nine. Yes, <laughs> But I incorporated my company in 2015. And um, my time being mine is the most beneficial thing. History, history in the making, man. This is gonna be one of them classics, right? Yeah, putting some on vinyl too, man. That's the must. Yeah. That's the great thing about like creating music like this, and it's like really meaningful, is when you look back on it, it's just like it's such a good feeling, man. You know when you know, like when you have that feeling about certain records, you know? It's gonna be a classic, a classic album. The first thing I'd say is um, develop some thick skin, <laughs> find a strong cipher of people that are like-minded, and forget everything the world told you. Yeah, start from scratch.
I'm ready for it all still. Wait, so what's today? <laughs> Today's the day we finished the album. It's a wrap. Bong bong. Yeah. <laughs> it's over. All right, what are the most rewarding parts of your job? Um, making memories are the most rewarding parts of my job. Because... What do you mean by that? Like, give me some memories that you've made that will last forever. Oh, man. There's so many. Um, the first time I ever worked with my friend Faza in the studio, it was a day I'll never forget. Um, the day that I got my studio, it's a day I'll never forget. The day I worked at Tough Kong, I'll never forget. There are people that I've met in the studio that we've had life-changing conversations that I'll never forget. It's, the reason why it's so important to me is because I spent so much of my life thinking that having money was going to make things good and then having so many people around me die in pursuit of money and all we ever had left after they died were memories. So I started to learn that like all you ever really make are memories. You know what I mean? I could go platinum but like if I don't have a memory with the people that matter to me I'll easily be forgotten. You know? All the, that's going to remain. <laughs> the memories people have of me and I feel the only thing I'll ever take with me are the memories I've made. So I think that's what's the best part about this. Mm-hmm. Situation, even though we gave birth to a name. 